Hi, this is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to design completely from scratch a strap footing in a real life example. This is a retail steel building uh, where the property line is very close to one of the exterior columns. So the available space around the column is very limited due to the property line location. Uh, so this footing needs to be eccentric in order to work. But in such conditions, uh, an eccentric footing would tend to tilt and overturn due to the eccentric load. One way to prevent this condition is to use a combined footing with the interior adjacent column. When the distance between columns is small, about 10 feet or smaller, then a combined footing is probably the best solution. But when the distance between columns increases, that approach is costly, mostly due to the large excavation required. In that case, a better approach would be a strap beam between the columns so that the exterior footing is not overturning or tilting. The loads applied to these columns are as follows. The exterior column has a dead load of 50 and the interior column 80 kips, light load 40 in the exterior and 70 kips in the interior. When you open up the foundation and uh, select one calculation for strap footing, this is the typical uh, form that shows up. All these numbers are default and uh, they don't mean anything to the current example so we can change all the numbers as required. What we need to do is enter first the known information. Let's enter first the loads in this example. Let's go to the loads tab. Since we are given the dead and live loads, we need to specify a nominal set of loading. So let's select this option here. And we are presented with the different load cases, dead, live, roof, live, snow, wind, and seismic. In this case, we only have dead and live, just for simplicity in the example. But of course, in a real life case, you can have all these load cases and combine them accordingly. In this case, we know from the statement that the dead load is 50 in the exterior and 80 in the interior column. This is the exterior, this is the interior. So let's input this, 50 and 80 for dead. So it's 50 here and 80 kips. Note that we are only entering the vertical you know, gravity loads, P, but the program accepts also uh, bending moments and also horizontal reactions if, if necessary. In this case, for simplicity, we will use only the gravity loads just just to illustrate the, the example. And life, from the statement, we know that the life is 40 and 70 kips. Let's input that, 40 and 70 kips. So we have all the loads already input. At the right pane, we can see the results. Uh, in the at a glance tab, we can see a summary of the results. Then the contents, we show a more detailed set of calculations. And uh, in the detailed tab, we can see a step-by-step -step set of calculations with the exposed formulas and references to the ACI code. Graphically, we can see also the design of the footing as we go with all the diagrams generated, also the design of the interaction diagrams of the columns, and finally a construction sketch of the design strap footing. Let's input also the material properties for uh, all the components. For the footings, F prime C is three, and uh, the rebars FY 60. The allowable soil bearing pressure has given by the uh, soil report is 3.5. The soil uh, friction coefficient is 0.45 is okay. And soil density and the concrete density is okay. For the strap footing, the properties is uh, same as uh, the footings is 360, 60 for the stirrups 
and uh, concrete density 150 normal weight and uh, finally for the columns we are using concrete strength of 4 uh, FY for uh, the main rebar 60 main uh, ties FY 60 and concrete density 1 150 so let's go back to the geometry we can see immediately that we have a problem in the soil bearing pressures the maximum is 3.6 and the allowable is 3.5. So we need to correct uh, the geometry accordingly to lower a little bit the bearing pressures. We know that the column to column distance is 20 feet. That's uh, part of the statement, is 20 feet. And all these uh, footing dimensions are just uh, uh, preliminary numbers that we, we can check in, in the program. So we need to increase uh, the size of the footing. For example, the exterior footing is 3.5, very close to the maximum allowable bearing pressure. So we need to, to increase a little bit the dimension, 7.5. The footing thickness also can be reduced. We can try uh, 16 inches, both footings, 3.6. And the soil cover, we can use 1.5 and 1.5 feet so 18 inches soil cover the water table is down there so it's not a factor in this in this uh, problem the strap footing since the columns are 18 by 18 we're going to select uh, the width of 18 and the height could be 24 and if we need to reduce the hike we will we'll do it later. We need to uh, specify the offset for uh, for the for the column. In the statement of the problem, we see that the uh, of offset is 14 inches. So let's input that 14 inches offset here, and the interior footing is concentric. Also, the columns are 18 by 18 both graphically we can see what we are doing here so basically this is <coughs> our our uh, design so far right now so we have specified this exterior footing 4.5 by 7.5 and the uh, strap footing is 18 inches wide and 24 inches deep so let's see the at a glance tab to see how the bearing pressures are we can see that interior footing is over stress you know the bearing pressure is is higher than the, the allowable so we need to increase the size of the interior footing let's go back to the geometry footings Let's focus on the interior. Instead of 6'6, six, six, let's say 7x7, seven 7 seven, seven foot by 7 foot. And now we can see that the bearing pressure is okay 3.3 versus 3.5. So we are okay in the bearing pressures now. Let's focus now on the rebars. Let's click on the reinforcement tab. The footings tab shows the rebars for the exterior footing and the interior footing. Since the size of the exterior footing is quite small, only four feet and a half, we need to use uh, smaller rebars uh, to avoid problems with the development lens. Let's say that is uh, number five every 12. If we, if we have 7.5 feet, uh, let's say eight rebars number five in the X direction. So eight rebars in the X direction, and uh, only five rebars in the Z direction, five rebars. For the interior footing, since it's seven by seven, let's say that is eight rebars number fives, and eight rebars number five in the other direction as well. The concrete cover is, is going to be 3 inches because it's the bottom of the footing 
and we need to provide the, the correct uh, complete cover according to the code. So we have a specified number five rebars for uh, both footings only at the bottom and uh, about number five at 12. Let's see how the capacity is in, in at a glance. Well, for example, here we are over in the minimum area of steel, 5% over, and in the interior footing we are 11% over. So we need to increase the number of rebars. Instead of eight, let's say nine, and instead of five, let's say six. So this, this problem is fixed now. And for the interior, let's increase one more rebar, eight in this direction and eight rebars in the other direction. And yeah, now the minimum steel uh, requirement is, uh, is met. So we are okay with this. As you can see in the other glance, all the checks are okay. If we click on the contents tab, we can see a more detailed set of calculations. For example, here we can see the controlling load combination for the exterior footing and the interior footing. We can see the shear acting, the capacity, and the ratio. Also the punching shear with the controlling combination with all the numbers, uh, all the calculations are here. In punching shear, the ratio is 0 0.58 for the exterior footing for the interior is 0.75 and then here we, we can see the bending design also the controlling combination for both uh, footings we can see the moments and the capacity and the ratio also the program checks the development length for the selected rebars in this case everything is passing we are okay Now let's focus on the reinforcement of the strap beam. We selected a, an 18 by 24 strap beam. We can see in at a glance that you know all these ratios are low, meaning that, that probably is uh, oversized this uh, beam. We can optimize it a little bit if, if we want. For example, in Fletcher we are only 0.39 instead of 18 by 24 let's say 18 by 20 22 so the ratio is 44 and we can optimize a little more if if, if we want mm -hmm. regarding the, the reverse for the strap beam we are using number eights and number sevens Let's try to use number fives as well to be consistent with the footings. Simplify the construction activities. Uh, since it's only 18 inches wide, let's use only four number fives and four number fives at the top and at the bottom. And for uh, stirrups number three and nine, it's okay. Let's see at a glance how that uh, affects the numbers. We are over here, meaning that uh, we need more more, uh, more uh, bending capacity. Let's use number, number sixes instead of number fives. Now we are okay, point, point 0.89 with four number sixes top and bottom. So basically looks like that and the construction detail looks like that with four number sixes top and bottom. If we click on the detail tab, we can see the same calculations that we saw before, but in more and more detail, step by step with all the formulas and, uh, and references to the ACI code. So we can follow all the calculations if, if necessary. This is the punching shear calculations for load transfer between the columns and the footing. Graphically, we can see the bearing uh, design. Note that the bearing pressures are uniform under the footings. This is because the reactions are assumed to be at the center of the footing. 
uh, I have uh, explained this uh, in a previous uh, blog post and I'm going to leave uh, the link uh, at the bottom. The program also generates the, in, uh, the shear and moment diagrams which are necessary to design the strap beam. The program also generates interaction diagram for uh, the two pedestals, the exterior and the interior. Finally, in the construction tab, the program generates a sketch, plan view, and elevation view of the final design. The program generates the uh, condensed report. It's a pre-formatted uh, report that includes text and, in, and images. Page 2, page 3, and finally page 4. The detailed report, similar to the contents report, is a pre-formatted report, high quality, with all the calculations in text and images. And also you can keep. With this, we complete the design of this uh, strap footing. As you can see, we did the design in a very uh, short period of time. As you can see, you can uh, save time and effort doing a design that otherwise would be very complicated and time consuming. Thank you for your attention, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.